You guys clinched a spot in the play-in tournament tonight. Um, after all that you went through this season, uh, the COVID outbreak, the injuries, 15 games under 500, just what does it mean to, to get to this point, this accomplishment? It's a, it's a great feeling for, for everybody involved, our entire organization. We, just, we chipped away and we were down, if, if, took a bunch of punches, but we just kept standing back up and fighting for one another and it put us in this position. And Brad and Russell led us and continue to instill that fighting spirit. No matter what, no matter what happens to you, you still got to go out and compete. There's then trust me, there was times where it was, you know, when we came back four or five games and it was, you know, it was hard, but we, we fought, we battled and we didn't get, let it get, get us down where we, where we couldn't, uh, celebrate the little steps that we were going to work on to, to make, but it was a great win. We're not, we're not satisfied. We, we still got one more game to go. You know, we're disappointed that we didn't get a game or two on that last, um, in Atlanta, but we bounce back and it's always hard when you're on a long road trip, uh, to come back that first game. And it's, uh, but I tell you what, our guys gutted it out and, and played Rollo. Rollo did a great job coming in. Cause we, when we got the lead, we were bleeding a little bit and they made a little run, but his, his hook shot was, was what the, what the doc, doctor ordered during, during that stretch. But a lot of guys played well. And, um, along the way, you know, I'm sure there were times where you, you guys felt like you couldn't point to certain things as excuses uh, or make excuses. Um, how, how tough were kind of the lowest moments of this season when you guys couldn't really convey it um, to the media? Well, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. I believe in just doing things the right way and you get rewarded. And, and that, was, that was the hardest part because we, we did everything the right way and did not get rewarded. And we got we got hit pretty hard. Like I said, many times, the hardest thing, you know, is to not see your players for 10 straight days, basically, and then come back and practice for just seven or eight guys and then go on a, on a tough three game trip and then have this seven of the, you know, the, I think seven, I think it was seven guys coming back like three weeks later for their first game. We knew, I knew that there was going to be some, some lingering effects to that. I didn't know exactly what it is. I, you know, you read about all the things that people go through when they do get that, when they do get COVID. And, but like I said, I give our guys a lot of credit because it's, it's, I've been a lot, I've been in the league a long time. And when you're 15 games under 500, you're, you're doing the, okay, where, where are we going uh, for vacation? Uh, but we we hung in there and fought back and stuck together and teams you know this is adversity helps adversity helps even those last two losses those are playoff losses and we came back and bounced back and and we won tonight but i'm proud of our guys all season the way they stepped up and never ever not one time they made an excuse and i didn't think they would either red Hey, Scott, um, you played a lineup tonight with Russell, three power forwards, and Robin. Where did you pull that one out of? That's, I mean, I've been doing that all year. We've just been, I've been, been thinking out of the, the box uh, all year, playing three centers, playing three point guards. You just do what you have, and you don't make an excuse, and you figure out ways to stay competitive. And then if you do that enough and you get some confidence, and then you can grow and add and, and kind of move things around and, and make it difficult for teams. We got, let's face it, we've got really, we got two really high level players, both all NBA players. And then we got really a lot of good role players that understand what they do. And we got a couple of, you know, we got some young players that are getting better and they're pretty consistent for being young players. And, but tonight's lineup, I, there's both teams had some lineups out there that was, um, interesting at times and uh you know i'm sure i'm sure you would 
love to get up to eighth if you could, because you get in the double elimination scenario. But if you guys go into Sunday in a scenario where it's only ninth or 10th, how do you prioritize uh, home court in a play-in versus maybe getting some extra rest going into that scenario for your Yeah, day? I mean, I don't, I don't think we're worried about the extra rest. Um, this time of the year, I mean, I, I think it's kind of, I don't know if the right word is, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. What's a day or two extra. We've been battling and scrambling and, and fighting and clawing and, and we're tired. I know I'm sure at times our players are tired. I'm sure the whole league is tired. The whole, you know, we're all tired. You know, it's, it's, it's the hardest year of probably all of our lives, just the, all the things that we had to go through and the COVID testing, the late, you know, we're going to have a, a late one tomorrow night. And then we got another one next morning early. So it's, um, we want to just play good basketball. You know, we hope that, you know, Brad keeps improving. Don't know what that means. I haven't even talked to the guys after his evaluation tonight. Um, but he has, there's another, what, 36 hours before we have to make a decision there. But if he's ready, great. If he's not, we move on to the next game, uh, Tuesday night. No matter where it's at, we got to show up and compete and give ourselves a chance to win. You do that by playing, by playing hard and playing for your teammates. You do that, you get a chance, uh, no matter who you have on the floor. I know there's times that we didn't do it as well as I would have liked, but we've been on a nice stretch of really competing. Ava. Kind of along those same lines, I understand that at a certain point, you don't have much of a choice, but with a guy like Anthony Gill, what makes you trust that he's going to, you know, you can kind of stick him in, in any situation and he's going to play um, like he does. He seems to play with a ton of poise. Yeah. You know, I give Tommy, Tommy Shepard, all the credit. He's been telling me about that young man for uh, last year and for two years, for two years. And he just said, man, this guy will fit us. He's, he's like the perfect culture guy. He works hard, great guy, will always be ready and, and a really good player that, you know, he's, he's obviously had great experience in college and then plays at high level in, in, in overseas. But I'll be honest, I even that's funny. I even talked to him a couple of days ago. I said, man, the first month, I thought I was better than you. And there was, there was times that he struggled uh, but I tell you what, he he just kept playing, and and then then it starts growing on you, and then you just see it every day, and it's not, it's not like he's, it's not fake. And that guy is cheering his teammates on. He's in every huddle, he locks into every play and every timeout just in case that I might make a sub after the huddle breaks. And then he started playing better in practice, and then then he threw him in the game, and then he, you know, the, unfortunately we lost that that game in Toronto where he took the huge charge and he missed a couple of shots, but that gave me more confidence and the team confidence. He, you know what he is? He's a winning basketball player that does a lot of winning things that don't really show up in the stat sheet, but you need in your locker room and you need on your bench and you need in your huddle and you need on the court. Like tonight, I thought his minutes were a uh, big part of our win, but I'm, I'm happy for him. Happy for him. Um, his family, newborn he just it's a, he's a great he's a great representative for our team and and he he's 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 an nba player and and tommy i mean tommy tommy nailed it i mean he really nailed it i can't say enough good things about him and um what made you want to put chandler in the starting lineup i think we needed some size you know they they we try to throw some size at at um at sexton uh he's he's tough strong I mean, he has a good name. Is it Young Bull? I mean, that guy, he gets in there and battles and competes, and they got they got a good one, and we wanted to put some size on him and try to frustrate him a little bit. Thought we did a pretty good job. Uh, but yeah, they 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 made they made some threes and that kept them kept them hanging around. But we we pulled away with some good defensive stops in that third quarter. It's kind of like almost mirrored the same game at their place. It was a close halftime in the third quarter. We pulled away. Alex. 
Hey, Scott, um, you know, you talked about the emotions and what it means to make the play, and especially after all the adversity. What was it like in the locker room? What were the players saying in there? How was how was the feeling, and, and how would you describe that? It was great. It was great. I mean, they threw a bunch of water on, on Russell again, and – because the last time it was a tie. Now this time they, they break him. I just I thought I just said, hey, we can't we can't be keep drenching Russell every time he breaks his own record. That's gonna come. I mean, we're gonna have mold issues in our locker room with the carpet. But it is exciting. It was an exciting moment for us. I mean, I don't think I don't even think we talked about much about the play in. And then, but it was a good it was a good moment for for after the game, Ariel. Uh, she handles a lot of our digital and she will be leaving and we kind of gave her a couple of things and guys were happy for her, but it was, a, it was a good moment through a lot of, a lot of tough things that we had to go through this year and COVID wasn't, COVID's no fun testing one hour, once a day. And then they gave us a little bit of a break the last month. You got two hours, twice a day to get out from your room on the road all those things just add up and it wears you down and but it's well worth it by us staying together and fighting for one another and getting an opportunity to play in the postseason and a follow-up real quick where do you kind of see your guys you guys as a threat in the east you know if, if you make it through the plane if you get into a series whoever the nets or whoever else you might end up sixers whoever it is you know if feels coming in healthy where, where do you see your guys as ceiling heading into the playoffs yeah, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead. We're just going to focus on just enjoy a day off tomorrow and get some treatments and get your body and mind right and focus on Charlotte um, Sunday. And then and after that, we got to focus on wherever wherever we are and whoever we play, and, and we'll worry about that. We know we can compete against any team in this league, um, but it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, obviously it's tougher without having Brad. Hopefully Brad is out soon or back in the lineup soon. Um, because we obviously know that that we're a much better team when we're we're he healthy and and Brad's a all NBA player and we, he's been missed the last three games. But it was nice for us to get a get an opportunity to win tonight at home and put ourselves in the position to play after the season's over. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Ben. Hey, Coach, uh, I guess you just said you don't want to look too far ahead, but just generally speaking, what's your philosophy in terms of shortening rotations in the playoffs? And do you expect that to kind of to apply that in the play-in situation? Yeah, I mean, that's there's probably going to be some tightening up or if, if, if guys maybe not playing as many minutes. Um, but that's that's going to be, you know, a feel thing, a health thing foul trouble thing, matchup. There's all kinds of things that you have to think about and our staff will be thinking about all those things. And, you know, we love to get everybody back and ready to play and healthy. But like I said, uh, how and Brad are important to what we do. They're tough, they're shot makers, um, they're gamers. And, you know, Brad is potentially could be the leading scorer in the league or top two for sure. Um, but I just we just focus on just going to focus on Charlotte first before we start thinking about anything else. I'm just glad that we're in this position because we stayed together and I couldn't be more happy, happier for the guys. And because it's um, they've been through a lot like we all have. Last question to Karita. Hey, Coach, you've talked about the season, obviously, and how it went. But when you look back, what would you say was the turning point that got you all back on track and able to be in this position? Um, I think the mental, the mental toughness of the group. I mean, you're by – I mean, you're, you're a lot of times – you nothing was normal for any of the players or probably you guys feel the same way. Got your family. And we've had, you know, we've had our family and we also have our basketball family. So we kind of had a little bit of a break there. Um, but I think the turning point was that we we never used it as an excuse. And I'm always, you know, I'm always um, all I have eyes and ears on, on the group and try to get the pulse of the group. And 
the sense anything was ever changing from that area. I don't believe in making excuses. I believe in just doing what you need to do and take care of business the best that you can. And whatever's thrown at you, that's just another opportunity to embrace it and challenge yourself to overcome it and, and enjoy the, the competition of, of having things thrown against you. And I thought we, we did that throughout this season. Like I said, there's a lot of lonely times because of all this, you know, usually you're, I've been in the league for 30 years. You got certain places when you're on the road, visit family. I've been in, I think I've been in half the team. So I have friends that were once ball boys that are like brothers to me. And I don't, you don't get to see those. And then families on our team, they've had families in just about every city. You don't get to see that, but we stuck together. And like I said, I couldn't be more proud of the group. Now that you mentioned it, coach did say something to me uh, before the last game. He said he thought I was trash at the beginning of the season. Um, but, uh, I'm glad that he doesn't think that now. Uh, you know, for me, it was just kind of one of those things where I just constantly keep working throughout the year, and um, my work will pay off. Um, but for me, I don't know. I don't know what the real change was. It was just coach decided that uh, that there was a, a void that needed to be filled, and uh, I just stepped in and tried to do that. You guys have played with so many different starting lineups, combinations, things like that. Um, a couple crazy ones tonight. Does that almost give you a confidence going into the playing game? Like it kind of the combination doesn't matter. It's not like you're set in one uh, specific rotation. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing for this team is that, you know, when everybody's had their number called, they stepped up. Um, and you look from top to bottom. Um, you know, there's guys on our team that will go a couple months without playing. Um, and then when they get into the game, you know, it, it's go time. Uh, and they step in and don't miss a beat. So that's huge for us, you know, because we have a lot of depth going into the postseason. Fred. What's going on, Anthony? How you doing, sir? Um, what would you say makes you a good rebounder? Um, <laughs> I would say we have a lot of people on our team who miss really well. So <laughs> it makes it a lot easier for me to uh, go get those rebounds, you know, uh, if the ball's not going directly in the basket, it's coming right there off in the front um, or on the side. Uh, but, you know, for me, it's just I want to be relentless. You know, in an offensive rebound, I have to feel like I can help the team uh, in that way. Um, so I just go after it. And and after kind of the ups and downs that you guys had as a team this season, the 17 and 32 start, what, what is it like to know that you've officially clinched the spot in the playing tournament? It's not going to end on Sunday. Um, it's huge for us. Uh, you know, I think that the Wizards are building something great here. Um, and we all believe that in that locker room. You know, management believes it. The staff believes it. Um, everyone from top to bottom believes that we're building a, a great program, a great organization here uh, that does it the right way. Um, you know, for us to have an opportunity to go into the postseason and make a run, um, it's huge for us. And we're really confident going into the postseason. Benjamin? Hey, G. Um, obviously, as a 28-year-old rookie, I think the expectations for you were a little bit different than, than most rookies coming into, into their first season. But for you, did you kind of notice the game slowing down for you? Because that's often a, a trope for a first-year player. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say it was an adjustment. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was fast because um, I played professional you know, at a high level in Europe. Um, and it's, it's really competitive over there. Um, but for me, the biggest thing was just trying to gain coaches' trust. Uh, you know, like I said before, and like he said, you know, you know, he, he didn't know what I could do before and just coming on the court and, and trying to prove every single day that I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be here for each of my teammates and sacrifice. And um, I try to put that on the court every single day. Neil. Hey, Anthony, I'm wondering if you can clarify for us the dousing that you guys gave Russ in the locker room. Was that because he broke his own record or because you guys clinched in the play in? Um, we actually did it where it's a rule. We're not allowed to do that now because it'll just be every single uh, game <laughs> to this point. Uh, so he ran in the bathroom and, and was yelling from the bathroom that we're not allowed to do that uh, anymore. So uh, maybe we'll get him a couple games. Maybe uh, if he has a really big triple double, we'll just surprise him one game. But you know, for Russ, it's, it's a normal occurrence. You know, and uh, I doubt that he wants to get splashed with cold water after every single game. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Fred. Yeah, Anthony, I just want to follow up as well. Last last time we spoke to you, I think we spoke to you before we spoke to any other player. 
And uh, you, ha you had a really good game that game. And every other player that we spoke to said kind of the most glowing things and were really adamant about your work ethic and, and how happy they were for you. Uh, and, and I was just wondering what, what it's like kind of as, as a rookie who, who worked as hard as you have to get into the league at this age, what, it, what it's like to have that respect from so many vets around the locker room at this point. Uh, you know, obviously that feels good, you know, to know that your hard work pays off. Uh, but these guys make it easy for me, you know, to watch what they do on the court every single day. Um, you know, I strive to be, you know, on the court at the level that they're playing every single game. Uh, so how do I get there? You know, I just put in the work. Um, and they, like I said, they make it so easy uh, because they work just as hard as me. Um, but for me, you know, I, I like to outwork everybody in anything that I do. Um, so uh, I take it, you know, that's competitive nature coming out of me a little bit, uh, but it feels great to know that, you know, those guys have my back just as I, I have theirs. Christos. Hey, Anthony, hope you are doing well. In the last couple of years, you used to play playoffs with him in EuroLeague. Now you are two games away to play playoffs with, uh, with the Washington Wizards. How how you prepare yourself about your playing tournament and what it means for you? Uh, it means a lot for me. Um, you know, at every level that I've been at, you know, I pride myself on winning. Uh, NCAA, you know, we were a successful basketball team. We won a lot of games. Um, you know, I go to Kim Key. We were successful. We won a lot of games. Um, and, and I want to continue that here. You know, whatever I have to do to try to help this team out win. You know, if that means going a whole game without scoring, if that means go three months without playing a game. Uh, but cheering everybody on, or if that means, you know, actually getting in the game and contributing. You know, I'm here for it, and uh, I'm just, I'm honored to be here on the court. Um, you know, but for me, winning is, you know, the biggest thing, and uh, doing it the right way is, is uh, really important, too, uh, because we can win and, you know, not be everything in order. You know, everybody not having a good time, uh, but this this group is uh, having a good time. We're all here for each other. Um, you know, we all love each other on and off the court, um, and we're here to support them. And also in Kimgi, you have a teammate like Alex Aisved. In uh, Washington, you have uh, Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook. Obviously, it's not the same. It's not the same situation. But how important for you and what? Uh, how important is to have so gifted teammates? And what did you learn from them? Yeah, you know, Alexei is a great player, um, just as Brad and Russ are. You know, Alexei could be over here playing right now. Um, you know, but you know, he has other obligations he wants to fulfill there. Um, but. You know, for me, I think playing with him actually prepared me for being here on this team. Uh, you know, you have a guy who Alexei is very ball dominant um, and you have to learn how to play off of him. Uh, and that's a similar situation here. You know, Russ and Brad are going to have the ball for the majority of the game. And OK, how do I help the team outside of scoring? You know, I, I defend, I rebound um, and I cut, you know, when they don't have a, a shot. You know, I, I have to present myself to try to do something to help the team. First off, just wanted to congratulate you on becoming the all-time triple-double leader tonight. Well, you know, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not about who gets there first. It's about who does it best, right? Right. Well, you got there really quickly. Didn't even know you were pursuing it. <laughs> um, no, how, uh, you know, obviously a big night for you guys, clinching uh, a spot in, in the play-in when considering the 17-32 and 32 start and, and the turnaround, does this maybe feel different uh, than, than, you know, it could have if, if this season had gone a different way? Um, maybe I, I, I know we're all really excited. We, we got this far, but we know we want to advance farther than just a playing game. And, and when you guys are, are 17 and 32, I mean, is this something that you expected to happen or, or were your, your feelings elsewhere? Um, you know, I think we, we knew the kind of the, the, the quality of guys we had in the locker room, the caliber of players. Um, I think it's it's important. It's 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 huge that we just kept persevering and kept kept on grinding. Like um, I said, we got you know we have still have more to do, but we just kept grinding. Chase. Hey, Robin, when you do look back at the, the tough times that you guys have overcome this season, kind of what stands out about the plight that you guys had to overcome? Um, you know, honestly, I, I think what's what's great about it so far is how fun these, you know, this, this last stretch has been for us. Um, 
playing playing what we think we, we can play at. Um, I think we, we we're aware we can get even better, but playing like we are, it's been it's been a lot of fun for us. I think that's where we're making the memories. And uh, were you surprised that you didn't get a foul call on that play um, with Jared Allen? <laughs> to a technical, <laughs> you look pretty surprised. I I, I was I, I was taken aback. I must admit. Neil. Hey, Robin, you alluded to it, you know, you guys just kind of pushing through and getting to this point. You've been on a lot of teams previously. Do you feel that this team is special? And, you know, maybe that's just because of Russ's nature that, you know, this is a team that was able to push through that, that other teams probably might not have. Um, I, I, um, yeah, I think when you have a turnaround like that, there's got to be something special. There's got to be something special about the makeup of the team. Um, you know, it starts with Brad and Russ. I, th I think it trickles down. We got a lot of guys that it's it's in their DNA like that, that grit, that in that intensity, um, and I, I think it, it's really helped us. It's really helped us come together, harvesting that mentality. Samir. Hey, Robin. Um, you guys are obviously 15 games under 500 on April 5th. Um, from that point on, would you say um, on April 5th, that was your rock bottom as a collector group? And if so, like, how were you guys able to um, just kind of bounce back from that and get yourselves into the situation you're in today? I mean, perhaps. I don't know that we've, we've really been thinking about anything like where, where our rock bottom was. I think what's a big part of our mentality is that we've just been looking at the next game ahead of us, um, you know, the next day, um, break it up in a little bits and pieces, the next quarter, the next possession. Um, that's, I, that's, that's been very key for us. And I think that's going to be huge going forward as well, particularly when you talk about playoff basketball. Absolutely. And if you do, you know, obviously you're going to make the playoffs, but uh, if you do face off against the Milwaukee Bucks, um, what do you got to say about facing off against your brother? I mean, I don't think he's really coming up in the scouting report, is he? Nobody's talking about nobody's talking about Brock Lopez. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Christos. Hello, Robin. Congratulations on the win. For, in, during the second half of the season, what did you notice as the biggest growth of that team, and how big is the confidence booster for you uh, with uh, the playing tournament ahead of? Um, as far as the defensive end goes, I think. A little bit of it was time, getting everybody together, um, getting everybody acclimated to each other on that side of the floor. Um, but gap has been huge for us. Um, Lex, Lex coming back, coming in and getting his feet under him. He's been huge on that end for us. So, uh, my, you know, I could go down the line pointing out players, but I think what's key is that we've been playing together on that end of the floor. And speaking for Anthony Gill, what impressed you most about his game, about his approach on the game? He, he's a really smart team player. You know, he's going to go out there, he's going to work hard, and he's going he's gonna to play within himself. He knows what he can do, and he's going to execute that to the best of his abilities. You guys clinched a spot in the play-in tournament uh, tonight. Just after all that you guys went through this season. What does it mean to, to get to this point and, and have the turnaround that you guys did? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a good feeling just to start off kind of some of the things we're capable, to, capable of doing. Obviously, we have some downs and we're uh, you know, thankful to have an opportunity to be able to make the playoffs. Our job now is to take care of business for one more game and you know, move us up to stand us over. And when, when could you kind of sense uh, that this team could could make the turnaround or was in the process of making it? I mean, I know you've been pretty positive the whole way, but yeah, I never, I had ne never doubted. Around. Honestly, never doubted. I knew once we finally got healthy and everybody kind of was clicking, um, it would put us in a good position to be able to make a run. And we did that. We, we made a, a quick turnaround and uh, put ourselves in a position to be able to be who we are now. So, Eva. You guys have had to uh, perform with so many different combinations of lineups. You had a bunch of weird combinations on the floor tonight. Does that give you confidence moving ahead? Just how ready everybody is staying? Are you happy with the level you're at from that standpoint? Uh, yeah, I think it's important. We're going to need everybody to move forward. Everybody's confidence needs to be high, playing at a level that they feel most comfortable. Um, and everybody did a good job of that tonight. Um, but part of my job is to make sure I find them and make the game easy for them as much as I can.
and you obviously had the ceremony with the jersey and, and finally got to kind of celebrate your record in front of the home crowd tonight. How nice was that? And uh, how nice is it to hear some MVP chants as well? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, very appreciative, especially the organization and the people who put that together for me and uh, being able to kind of celebrate that in front of home fans is always a, an unbelievable feeling. It's something that you always cherish. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that uh, obviously I'll put up and hang in my house. So I'm happy to be able to have something like that. Olivia. Hey, Russell. Um, I, I Congratulations on 183. You're just going to keep beating your record. And I heard that you got soaked um, in the clubhouse. But I want to know really quickly, what was your message to the team? Did you say anything to them about winning this game and finally getting into this play in tournament? Um, no, nothing to talk about particularly. Just I wanted to make sure we had fun. My message is always a lot of times, a lot of pressure. Um, to be able to release pressure, just having fun and enjoying the game. And I think tonight guys did that. Um, and I did a better job of just enjoying the game, embracing it, living in the moment, and uh, you know, we came out with the win. And I saw the stat that it was your seventh straight game with 15 plus assists, and only John Stockton and Isaiah Thomas have done that. How does it feel for you as a player to be in the conversation with guys like that as you continue to grow your career? I um, mean, it's, uh, it's an honor, man, to, to be able to uh, just be in a conversation with guys like John Stockton, and, uh, who's been able to. At the assist title that nobody would ever reach, um, being able to pass the ball. Um, I take a lot of pride in being able to decision making and play making. And, uh, you know, my job is to make sure I can make the game easy for everybody to feel as much as I can. Um, and I try to do that every night. Fred. Hey, Russell, uh, off of that, you said the other night, and you've said a couple times, you feel like you're the best playmaker in the league. I, I was just curious, at what point in your career did you start to feel like that? <laughs> I've been felt like that. It's just that, you know, things get overlooked just because of um, who I am and what I do and what I bring to the table. But like I said, uh, when I've always said it, um, I'm a player that do a lot of different things. Um, and at my position um, and in our league, um, I just feel like I'm the best playmaker because I'm able to do things and put people in position um, to make it successful. And that's a part of my job. But, um, I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with thinking that at all. Neil? Hey, Russ. We saw you were rocking the Elena Deladon jersey uh, to the game today. It's obviously their 25th, you know, anniversary for the league. Um, what does the WNBA mean to you? Oh, man, it means a lot. You know, my wife played basketball. Uh, so I'm, women's sports in general. Um, it's very important. Um, I think a, a big word for me is just empowerment. You know, when you've been able to um, see and understand um, the amount of sacrifices that women have to make, the amount of things they have to go through as women in sports in general. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a different it's a, it's a different league, and uh, I'm very supportive of all women in, in all sports, especially our home team here, uh, the Mystics, uh, especially in WBA on, on the basketball side, because obviously. Uh, us as NBA players, we want to make sure we support our uh, our counterparts, and that's the WBA because those women uh, sacrifice and do the same thing that we do: sacrifice their time, their body, their, their mind, their energy, uh, and they should be acknowledged for the things that they do, and they should be rewarded for the things they do as well. Thanks, Russ. Anthony. Hey, Russ, congrats on a, another great night on 183. I'm sure you've listened to J. Cole's new album, The Off Season. He mentioned you in the song Amari, specifically your classic uh, rock away, uh, rock a, a baby celebration that we all know and love. Uh, what does it mean to you that that Cole shouted you out on this album? And, and, and what do you think of the album overall? Um, I haven't fully listened to it thoroughly, but J. Cole, I'm a huge fan of his music, and a huge fan of him as a person more than anything. Um, he's one of the greats, um, you know, in the hip hop space, and you know, to be able to be mentioned on songs and to be thought of is, uh, you know, all something that as a kid you always think about it, hoping that you, you get named with a song. So to be able to have that, especially on his album, is uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I, I might say. Ben. 
Hey, Russ. Um, obviously, the season has been filled with individual accolades, broken records, and so on. And I know you weren't too perturbed about missing the All-Star game, but uh, at this point in the season, do you start to think about the All-NBA team at all, or is that kind of just not a thought? Um, no, I don't think about it either. All-Star NBA, I mean, listen, uh, whoever picks it, I think, I don't know, I think the media, actually, I think you guys may pick it, uh, pick All-NBA, whoever that is. Um, you know, that doesn't that doesn't deter anything that I do. That doesn't deter my the mindset. That doesn't deter who I am. Doesn't deter anything in my life. Actually, uh, to be completely honest with you, um, I'm very grateful and blessed to be able to go out and play. Um, I enjoy playing this game. I embrace it. Um, my job is to be able to use the platform, regardless if I make all NBA All Star or not, to use my platform and help other people, empower other people, and that's all I care about. Last question to Brianna. Hey, Russ. Um, so kind of following up on the J. Cole question, um, how do you think that he will do in the uh, playing for Rwanda in the Basketball Africa League? And um, what are you looking forward to and seeing in this league in their inaugural season? Um, I don't know much about the league, honestly, to be honest, but I know J. Cole can play. Uh, that's what I do know. Um, and my, I just hope he does well um, and pray that he stays healthy and, uh, you know, he competes. I know he can play the game. Um, that's about it.